And I'm happy to in introduce David Landero, from Aust originally from Austin Community College and now at Rules-Based Medicine. David, take it away. All right. Well, I'm David Landero, and I worked at Rules-Based Medicine. And well, my story is not as amazing, but it still has its little hurdles. So I graduated from Maynard High School at 2013. And I originally wasn't born in this country, so I didn't really have much inspiration to go into school, you know, at least in the United States, because, you know, not having Social Security or anything, um, I couldn't go to college, so I didn't really care too much. But luckily in 2013, um, they passed the Deferred Action for Childhood Arrival, so I was able to get, you know, legal oh some sort of legal status in the states and at that point i'm like well i wish i would have been doing better in school now it took me a while to start college from here and then i was just doing odd jobs here and there not really knowing what to do i wanted to learn some arabic so i tried doing that construction wasn't really for me and it wasn't until 2019 which i'm like all right suck it up you're going to have to do the essays. You're going to have to do the research. You have to do whatever, right? So I decided to join the biotech program at ACC in 2019 or so. And it took me a while. To, I barely graduated this month, basically. It took me a while just because I was trying to pay for myself. I don't want to get no student loans or anything. And, I mean, it's, it's expensive just living and but before I graduated, uh, I ended up getting a job at MD Aronson as an animal attendant. So we were, we took care of our rhesus monkeys, all of the boons. And it was a research campus, so not, not like a zoo or anything. So I got the job because I wanted to get a, it's my foot in the door on the research side, you know, because I was not expecting to get a research position there. It's just to meet people. So that's what happened. I met the uh, lead veterinary tech there, and he's a principal investigator for a bunch of different researchers that he's doing right now. And I started talking to him, just network, you know. We became good friends, and he eventually introduced me to the research that he was doing. And at this time, I was almost done with the degree, so there was some uh, internship courses that I could take, and therefore I was able to do it because at that time it was COVID. So they're really strict about their COVID um, regulations there. So no, you, you didn't really have any, no internships were open to the public, only if you worked there. So I got lucky there. And so, yeah, I started working on his research where he was doing um, cortisol research. Um, he was trying to relate stress to IBS in monkeys and uh, eventually leads to, look, to colorectal cancer, which a bunch of our monkeys did have it. And they also developed um, irritable bowel syndromes as well. And a lot of that was due to stress in, the, in their environment, you know. So we basically took hair samples from the monkeys. And it was really simple. It wasn't too extravagant. So I had the ability to do that. And so we took hair sample from the monkeys and we extracted the quarters from there and just gathered the data of different types of monkeys to compare it to monkeys that had a uh, colorectal cancer or aerobout bowel uh, syndromes. And we uh, basically looked at the differences of cortisol and see if it had any relationship to that, which actually did. I mean, um, monkeys with colorectal cancer did have a uh, overall higher stress levels or cortisol levels if you might say, but that basically gave me about a year. What And at this point, I, need, I didn't even have my associate's degree or anything. So I it was hard for me to get a job in the biotech field with not being a graduate. But luckily, that gave me about a year's experience for in the laboratory, basically. And that got me where I am today at rules-based medicine. Uh, you want to go to the second slide? So... I was able to go in there, use a starting point. Um, I wanted to get more into the research and development side, which I'm. that's my goal right now. But right now you start a low position 
in the inventory. And now I'm moving to the testing, which it's going to be more fun. So I hopefully it's more fun for me. That's why I'm looking. I'm looking for just to like keep learning on the on the whole aspect of what they're doing and which I have. So um, I think it's the previous slide. All right. So in rules based medicine, we are basically a biomarker testing facility. So we get a bunch of different samples from different campuses, doctors, it's different places around the world because we are an international company. Well, not, not this one, but our parent company that owns a whole bunch of different companies around the world. So we get different samples from like China, Europe, and stuff like that. And we're basically tasked with taking the sample, analyzing it, doing an ELISA test to measure certain biomarkers. And we have like over a hundred biomarkers that we test. So, and biomarkers are just basically molecules or some kind of, yeah, it's basically molecules that are present when you have a disease or some kind of infection that indicates that infection or disease. Um, so that's what we do, but we do it in like a high throughput process. It's almost like a laboratory assembly line for cars, but for testing um, biomarkers. And next slide. Okay, so we use both, you know, manual um, processes and automation. And the first part is basically adding all the samples, all the reagents to the plates, to those ELISA plates that you saw on the previous screen. And from right there, because we're running so many plates a, a, a day, we're running like around 100 or so plates a day, we got to do this in steps, so like an assembly line. So after we process all those plates, we take them to these ticking machines that what they do is really a lot of times just diluting the samples so that it's automatic. So we just put the samples in there, the plates, and you forget about it really. You just had to check on it a few times because they do tend to mess up sometimes. And that gets really annoying. <laughs> but that's really the focus of this machine. It's just an automation equipment to speed up the process and automate it basically and so that goes through the whole process of diluting it again the sample ready for this next slide for our they're basically glorified plate readers at least that's how i see them this is one of our luminex and the samoa the big one on the side um but our main one is the luminex this machine the the square one the small one um that one we have like at least 20 or 30 of those machines and each of those takes a plate and basically runs through this and inside the inside the machine it's basically like this laser that detects the bead it takes the bead and that's how it, with a red laser and that's how we identify what kind of biomarker it detected because each bead is each bead is basically specified for a certain biomarker. So if it detects this bead, that means, oh, it has this biomarker. And the green laser is basically to, to quantify it, to see how much of that biomarker is, is present in a certain sample. And th so this basically runs in an automatic mode. And all those little uh, uh, dots on the left right here with the laser all those beads is a single bead that it detects one at a time in a high pace mode. So it's really cool stuff. I mean, you can't really see that. It'd be cool if you could see that. I would love to see that in real person, but this, I can only see the data, right? <laughs> and next slide. So uh, the work, the beads are basically dyed with different dilutions of color and they're given a specific number. And that's how we can basically form uh, our graphs. We graph the data, we graph the uh, types of bead to compare to their fluorescence. And we basically do a graph and that's how we measure how much of a certain biomarker we find in a certain sample. And yeah, I mean, that's what I do there. And other than that, um, 
I'm still working right now. I graduated, so I'm going to be transferring to different departments just to get the lay of the land of the whole process. And I hope to get into UT so I can do my undergraduate because like Dr. Cagney, uh, I think I'm more aligned to the research aspects of things. I'm not too, I don't really like the manufacturing part, but it pays really good. And, but like her, I, I align more with the research aspects of the whole science. And I hope to eventually do my doctorates soon in a few years here now. Yeah. And that's all. Thank you. <laughs>